Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. On this channel, I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. And in today's video, we are doing a series. This is a new series. We're going to be talking about indoor gardening. And the reason for this video is because it's hard times right now. I totally understand it. Bob actually recently just got a layoff notice from CP rail again. He only was at work for like, I think maybe six months. So he got a layoff notice. I know many of you are in a similar situation. And then just in general, the uncertainty of groceries on the shelves. I mean, truck drivers are quitting in droves because of the vaccine passport scenario. So let's talk about how you can grow your own food to provide for your own family indoors. And so the only way to do this in a holistic manner that makes sense is to actually break this down into bite-sized video pieces. So these aren't gonna be long, but it's going to be an entire series that can be used to help you guys grow anything from tomatoes, peppers, cucumbers, lettuce, microgreens, you name it. With that being said, today is election day. So if you're feeling stressed out, you're feeling hopeless, put your vote to good use. I'm just kidding, but I'm, I'm semi-serious at the same time. I am a political crazy person. I'm an absolute nut for politics. So today is election day in Canada. I don't care who you vote for. I firmly believe in the democratic system. Anyways, let's look at grow tents and lights and discuss heights, sizes, and all that stuff in between. And the reason for this video is actually because I had a friend text me and said, what do I use for a tent? Because I actually gave them a light to borrow to help them with indoor gardening. And they had no idea what tent to buy um, or if they needed a tent. So let's jump into exactly what to look for. So I'm sure you guys have seen this tent a million times by this point, but this is the Mars Hydro tent and this is a two foot pattern by two foot pattern. And inside of this, I have the SP500. Now keep in mind that when I got the tent, I had the TS1000 in it. It was the one foot by one foot, it's quite a large LED light. And I found it a little bit too powerful for a majority of the plants I was growing in this tent. So if you have a shorter tent, so I'm, how tall am I? I'm like five foot eight. So I, this is like four feet, I guess, this, this tent about four feet high. So if you have a four foot high tent, go for something that isn't necessarily the big box square, but something that's more of a tube light, such as this SP500. Another really important thing to look at when you're determining tent light, that type thing, is actually looking for these fins. So you see the fins on the side? The TS1000 does not have the fins and therefore it can heat up. And in a tent of this size without fans and air conditioning, it can get relatively warm. So if you're growing things such as a lettuce or any sort of brassica species, herbs, things can get a little bit leggy, a little wonky pretty quickly. So SP500 with the two by two tent, four feet high, that is an ideal setup. Now the footprint on the bottom is about two growing trays. So two seedling starting kits, the 72 cell ones, and then a little bit of a strip on the side for some odd pots. So in this, you could definitely do microgreens. Um, you could do a single pepper plant, a single cannabis plant. Any more than that, you are going to be slightly limited. I mean, when you first start the seeds, you think, oh, this is great, I got tons of room. Once things get going, eh, not so much. So keep that in mind, but overall, I do use this tent quite often. Um, I do find, unless if you have these plant, the lights on a dimmer, I do find they're a little bit too intense for a racking system with the Mars Hydro. So if you need to and you want to do multiple levels or layers of actual plants, I would highly suggest putting said light onto a dimmer and the TS1000 does have a dimmer on it and that would allow you to stack your lights accordingly based on their lighting needs. So something to keep in mind. So behind me here I have the TS1000 which again was the light that was a little bit too intense for the 2x2 but since the Mars Hydro does have a dimmer we can get away 
with the lower height in a case where we have a larger footprint or a larger grow tent to work with. So with this grow tent, we are around that four foot mark still. However, we do have a two foot width, which is the same as the original. However, the length is a four foot. So it has quite a bit more room. It has the ability to hold four seed starting trays plus some pots. So in reality, you could do probably two cannabis plants, two tomato plants, two pepper plants in this, or you could do a ton of lettuce, um, microgreens, herbs, um, that sort of thing. So there's a lot more room in here. Again, because the TS-1000 does have that dimmer option, which is very important if you want versatility between say growing habaneros or growing lettuce. Like if you wanna be able to transition wildly between two very different types of plants, then that is something to consider. Now, this is like quite honestly, a very appropriate size for an apartment. And this is probably as small as I would go in my personal opinion, especially if you're looking for fresh fruits and vegetables every single week type thing or every single day you want to be able to harvest from it. So definitely a good option. Now you guys have to let me know. I asked this question quite a few times now, but I wanted to know if you wanted um, makeshift DIY hydroponic setup or if you wanted soil growing indoors. I need to know that answer to that question. What's going to help you guys the most? So far the vote is for soil grown. So either a container, cloth, or the garden socks, which is uh, most likely what I'm going to be doing in these indoor tents. So Keep that in mind, let me know in the comments down below. Okay, so behind me here is probably the Cadillac option for indoor growing. Now, this would be for someone who's definitely trying to grow a few tomato plants, a few cucumber plants, a few um, flowering plants, ones that you want to flower and then fruit from. This is definitely tent light setup you want. Now, as you can see, this is quite a bit taller than I am. I can physically stand ups inside of this Mars Hydro tent. Now this is three feet by three feet and quite honestly, probably five feet tall or six feet tall. And inside of it, I have their newest light. And as you can see, this is quite a bit different than the previous lights I showed you, which is the SP500 and that TS1000. Now, while the SP500 has the added ventilation with the fins, the TS1000 does not. However, the TS1000 has a dimmer. Now the dimmer switch isn't super convenient to locate on the TS1000. However, this light here takes best of both worlds and combines the two. So this is a series light. It starts at 4,000, but it can go up to 65,000. And it is a daisy chain light, meaning you can link multiples of these lights together to make a giant grow area. And so I'm just gonna show you guys some close ups of this light. So as you can see here, we have like the daisy chain. We have a nice on off switch, which is the SP500 and the TS1000 do not have. There's not an on off toggle. You actually have to physically unplug or place it on a timer, whereas this one has a legitimate on off switch. And then the actual uh, dimmer on this is super duper convenient because it's just on the side here. So with the TS1000, you actually have to you know, pop some parts off and go inside of it to actually get that to work. So this is what this bad boy looks like. So the really nice part is obviously the added ventilation. It's not going to get nearly as warm, so we're not gonna end up with bolting. And then the dimmer switch is huge for burning, especially again, if you want a dynamic range of what you can grow. And now this is inside of a three by three by five. However, um, I would probably argue based on the intensity of this light, you could get away with a much larger tent if you wanted to. This is just what I have here. So the question everyone's probably wanting the answers to is whether or not you can use the grow light without the tent. And the answer is yes, you can. However, you may notice some energy loss, meaning your energy utilization based on your light may be less. However, what you can grow may be more. So while you may get a harvest sooner with a grow tent, you have less area to grow in. Whereas if you don't use a grow tent, you just use the grow light, you can grow in a larger range and you can physically move your plants according to their sunlight needs. So you don't have to go as all out as this. You can do tent less. I mean, if you're very sensitive to scents, so if you're sensitive to uh, cannabis smell or if you're sensitive to 
the smell of tomatoes, this, you know, probably not a great idea. You may want to go with the grow tent in that scenario, but overall, if you're okay with scent and you're okay paying a little bit more to get uh, energy wise, paying a little bit more before you can harvest, then you will be just fine. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments down below if you are going to be indoor gardening this year and why. I would love to know the reasons for why you are doing that. This is probably, you know, the most boring of all of them, but we had to cover lights. We had to cover grow tents, whether or not you need them. So it's an absolute mess when it comes to indoor gardening. I will talk to you guys next time. Be sure to give the video a thumbs up. Bye.